So in this tutorial, I just quickly wanted to show you how you can create your own ranged weapons and projectiles completely from scratch. As you might already know, um, there is the RC Lab pre-made folder in the project and there you can find weapons and projectiles that I created and of course you can just use them and modify them. But in this tutorial I just want to go through the full process of creating a new projectile. Okay, so let's create a new folder called tutorial and uh, then let's start off with creating the projectile. For this I'm just going to use a default sphere. I'm just going to keep it simple, but you can use whatever graphic you want to use. Uh, we're instantly going to drag it into the tutorial folder and delete it from the scene again. And you also want to make sure it's in a resource folder. Resources. Uh, it needs to spe be spelled exactly resources. That's important because basically then uh, Unity tracks it as a resource that can be spawned at runtime. Okay, so now I'm just going to call this tutorial projectile. I misspelled it, one second. Okay, now with double click, you can open it up in the um, prefab view like this. And now as said, it completely doesn't matter um, what kind of graphic you're using for the projectile, but it needs to have a sphere collider or just any collider. It needs to have a rigid body. And this should be set to interpolate and continuous. Basically, you should do this for any uh, fast moving objects. And then you also want to add the projectile component, of course. And currently there's a bug that the components are not loading, but I will fix this. For now, you just need to reload your scripts. Uh, yeah, this will be fixed probably by the time you're watching this. Then we're going to leave this at default settings because we're not later going to add an explosion and then I'm going to add the visual and sound effects there. So um, let's now use this projectile or you know what, um, let's make the graphic a bit better. So let's add a glowing red material and let's also add a trail renderer. Let's decrease the width and make the curve something like this. And then let's also decrease the time to a short amount because it's a projectile. And you can add whatever material you want to, but glowing materials look the best. So now you can't see the glow um, in prefab mode, but you can see this is your projectile with a trail. And we're also going to decrease the size of it to something like 0 0.1. Uh, otherwise it's going to be a bit gigantic uh, when you fire it. Then, um, in order to use any projectile, you of course need to create a ranged weapon. So go to create, RC lab, weapons, and then ranged weapon. Now I'm going to call it tutorial weapon. Now, I'm not going to go through all variables in this tutorial. Um, basically, I don't, don't need to since there's a documentation I've written and under the creating weapons section, you can find an explanation of what every single variable does. Then uh, let's just create a basic pistol. So let's increase the force to something like 150. Let's set the cooldown to something like 0 0.5. Um, we're also going to use the damage falloff. Um, for this, you just want to create a damage falloff curve, something like this. And now I can say that this falloff curve starts at 10 uh, meters distance and ends at 100 meters. Now what this means is that at 10 meters you're going to have full damage and at 100 meters um, you're going to have zero damage. Now you could increase that to something like 0 0.1 and now you're still going to have 10% damage even after 100 meters. Okay now projectile spawn amount we're going to leave that at 1 and we're going to increase it later. Then as for the stability um, the normal stability is when you don't aim and the stability with ADS is when you hold down the right mouse button and you're aiming with your weapon. So let's give it a spread of 1 when you're aiming and 2 when you're not aiming. Now uh, we can leave this pretty much default. And as for the projectiles, it doesn't look exactly like this for you now, uh, but in the next update it will. Uh, you just need to take the, uh, the name here and I'm just going to give it a bit more specific name because I'm not sure if I used that name before. Uh, whatever, you just want to paste the name of your 
uh, projectile in here. Now, in order to use any weapon, it needs to be an ability, because the player inventory, as you can see, uh, only takes in abilities in the weapon hotbar. It should probably be called ability hotbar, uh, but whatever. This is basically because later I'm going to make it so that you can use ranged attacks and movement abilities and melee attacks all combined in one ability and it's not just going to be ranged weapons. So go to create RC lab abilities ability and then we'll call it tutorial ability and I'll also copy that name over here. Now, uh, you could add multiple weapons to the action list here using ranged actions, but we're going to keep it simple. Just check is weapon, uh, go for simple weapon and drag and drop the weapon in. Now you can also choose a blaster type. So let's go with pistol. And now you can go to the combat script of the player and add the ability to the hotbar. It's now on slot six and I can choose it with the number seven. Okay, so you can see this is working. It is firing our red projectile. Uh, it's pretty boring currently. So one thing we can easily do, well, let me reload the script. <laughs> one thing we can easily do is add sound. So for example, we could use the sound uh, silenced pistol two, I think it's called. Uh, currently you need to type the names in so I could look uh, up how it's called. It's called Silence Pistol 2. Yeah. Yeah, you need to look them up uh, currently. I will change that in the future. So um, you type in the sound just like that and then you can add the muzzle flash. That's really easy. Uh, we're just going to go for red and leave it at one size. And now if you play again, you have a sound and you have a muzzle flash. Okay, and now if we, for example, want to make the projectile explosive, that can be done really easily by going to the projectile and adding the explosive script like this. Then we can basically leave the variables at default here. And as for visual effects, we're just going to use the orange red explosion like this. And then for the sound effect, let me quickly check how it's called. It should be this one, explosion barrel. That's the one I want to use. And now we just go back to the projectile and paste it in here. If you now would play and play the pistol again, you can see that it's explo uh, that the projectiles are explosive now. So this is how easily you can change something like this. And this would deal area damage um, if you had enemies. Okay, now basically, um, if we want to make this a rocket launcher, for example, this can also be done really easily. So the first thing that would need to be different is that we're going to use the rifle model instead of the pistol model. And we're going to, let's make the rocket fly slowly. So let's go 75. Um, let's increase the cooldown and let's give it a damage multiplier of 3 because obviously a big rocket launcher should deal uh, a bit more damage. Now the rest can be basically left the same except that maybe we should increase the size of the explosion a bit. But you can see it's now switched to the rifle model and it's basically a rocket launcher. Now let's go ahead and increase the size of the explosion so that it looks a bit more impactful. Okay, so the size is increased. We'll also go and decrease the size here. And you can see in red, by the way, how big the explosion is. However, you would obviously need to drag it in your scene if you really want to compare that to your enemies, for example. Now you can see the explosion is bigger and it does feel a lot more like an actual rocket launcher. Now let's do something a bit crazy and let's create um, a rocket, a shotgun rocket launcher just to show you how easily um, you can change things like that. Basically, all you need to do is change the projectile spawn amount to let's say 8 and 
then we want to count the solve as one shot because otherwise it would be playing the sound eight times uh, for each shot. Now you can increase the spread a bit. Let's go with two, let's go with 1.5 and three. And everything, everything else can basically stay exactly the same. And just by this one simple change, you can now use it and <laughs> yeah, one sec, uh, I think I forgot something. Basically, the um, projectile needs to be in the what is projectile layer. I'm sorry for mentioning this now. Um, otherwise, the projectile is going to collide with itself and then explode mid-air uh, because it collided with something. So now you can see, we basically created a shotgun, uh, a rocket launcher shotgun that shoots explosive bullets. And this was really, really easy to achieve. Just a few simple clicks, just a little change from the last one. Then let's also uh, work a bit with delay between spawns. So one thing you can do is if you have eight spawns, you can just, for example, say the delay, but oops, that is caps lock on. Um, you can, for example, say 0 0.05 seconds between each spawn. And what this is going to do is that if you play it now, it's actually firing them um, in sequence, like this. And this is also quite a cool effect. So if you wanted this um, rocket launcher shotgun uh, spray to be a bit more mage-like, so there could be an actual magic ability in the game, um, let's enable the custom spawn points and let's create a line creator. Now we're basically going to try to create two lines so that it spawns in uh, two times four projectile lines. Uh, you're going to see what I mean in a second. Oops, there's already three point uh, creators. So let's go for the line creator and then let's create two line creators. The first one is going to have four points and the second one as well. And then the start pos pos position is going to be um, minus two on the x-axis and two as end position. This is basically how long the line is going to be. And the rest can be left just like that. Except we probably want to use use camera as spawn point and use strict camera forward since this makes the most sense uh, in this situation. Now let's remove the time between spawns again and let's hit play to see what this changed. Yeah, that kind of didn't work. Okay, um, so I figured out what was wrong. For some reason, the use camera as spawn point uh, doesn't work. Um, for now, it does work in the normal RC lab scene. Not 100% sure why it doesn't work here. Maybe I changed something in the scene that I shouldn't have. But whatever, in the normal scene it should work. However, for the sake of this tutorial in this scene, I'm just going to uncheck it and then let's hit play again. And let's have a look at what we've created. So yeah, by the way, I also set the offset of the second line a bit lower. So now we kind of have like a barrage and well, the sounds uh, sound kind of scuffed, I'll be honest, but you can use different sounds or decrease the volume uh, like you want. For example, I'll just turn the volume down for now. So you can see it's kind of like a barrage of shots that fly in two lines. So that was quite easy um, to add completely custom spawn points. And you could now also combine this with the time between spawns again. And let's put the lines a bit further apart, by the way. And this one a bit more up. So now we kind of have um, a full barrage going from uh, right, right to left on both sides. And this is quite a complex ability um, created out of a pistol with really just a few clicks if you know where to click. So yeah, this was a quick example how you can create a basic projectile and then turn it into a pistol and then from there create basically any weapon that you can think of. Um, this was really just 
a little showcase uh, there are a lot more options you can use and in further updates there will be so many more um, but for now i hope this video helped you to understand a bit better how the rc lab works and yeah see you in the next tutorial